All right, in this lesson, we're gonna look at a ratio analysis uh, equation that we would use to kind of understand some of the financial aspects of an income statement. We talked about in the last couple of sections that ratio analysis is kind of an important thing because it allows us to a little bit sort of uh, level of planning field when it comes to wanting to compare our results with the industry, our results with our peer group, our results with everybody else in the world. Uh, so this kind of helps us, you know, bring those numbers down to a manageable level where we can actually look at them and then compare them to other people rather than just comparing our uh, total sales, right? Total sales really doesn't mean anything if your competitor is being more efficient and maybe they're lowering their price, but they've got a better profit margin, right? So um, it's important to know that ratio analysis is an important analysis technique that we use to kind of understand what's going on in an organization as well as to how we compare to everyone else. So today we're gonna to be looking at the net profit margin. This is an important one because everything is based on profits, right? We want profits. It almost doesn't matter that we have big revenues if we don't have profit. So let's take a look at the ratio analysis. So a ratio analysis is a way to get a quick look at different aspects of the business financials. By doing ratio analysis, one can compare current results with past or expected results as well as other competitors. So there's a really good reason why we use ratio analysis in accounting. Now, the net profit margin is what we're looking at today. The net profit margin, or simply the profit margin, tells us how tells the user how much profit is being earned for each dollar of revenue that is incurred. So uh, what we're trying to do here is that you know you might take in a hundred bucks from a customer. But at the end of the day, after all of your expenses, you only come up with a buck. Well, that's not so good, right? Whereas you could sell something for like $50 and your net profit margin is like $5. That would be a better efficiency use of a sale rather than $100 that only brings you back one versus the 50 that brings you back five, right? So that's what we're trying to do here with the net profit margins. We wanna see how much profit's actually being earned for every $1 of sale that we actually have. Now the equation for the net profit margin looks something like this. We start with our net income. So we take our net income, our bottom line income, and we divide it by our total revenue. So net income divided by revenues gives us net profit margin. Obviously, we want to see the profit margin as big as we can, but we know that it's not always going to be huge um, unless we're in an industry where we have huge profit margins. So profit margins are usually not over 100% because you can't make more than you actually take in, but you never know, right? There's other reasons, other things that can happen. All right, so how do we interpret those results? Well, the higher the net profit margin, the better. Higher results mean that the company keeps more and essentially passes the more profits to their shareholders. So from a shareholder standpoint, I wanna see high profit margins relatively to their peer group, right? So I wouldn't expect a grocery store to do more than um, three to 4% because that's usually where their range is. Uh, but if they're doing 50%, then that's gonna tickle my ear and go, okay, there's something going on here that I'm not understanding because grocery stores have a low margin. So it's, it's not that we don't want them high, it's that they have to be high uh, according to their peer group. We would never expect a grocery store to be more than three to 5%, let's say, uh, historically, unless they were selling some high price dollar amount things. If they are, then yeah, we would expect maybe a bump in that because of that. But normally speaking, based on the industry, grocery stores three to 5%, okay? So we're looking for higher the better, okay? All right, so if we look at Facebook here, and I know this is small here, but I'll point out some of the numbers here that we're gonna name. So we got Facebook's here. Uh, we look at their net income. Their net income is $22,112,000,000. Uh, their total revenue is $55,838,000,000. Uh, $55, so that is the numbers that we're gonna use. We've got our equation here, net income divided by revenues. So if I take 22, Point one one two billion dollars and divided by the fifty five billion eight hundred and thirty eight dollars, we would get a profit margin of thirty nine point six percent. So what does that mean? That means for every dollar that Facebook takes in, thirty nine point six cents of it goes to profit. 
profit, meaning that they've paid all of their expenses and they still have 39.6 cents, which means the other 61-ish percent, so the other 61% has to pay for everything else. So the 61% probably pays for employees, pays for all of the technology, pays for every all the hardware. They have physical locations when it comes to their headquarters and regional offices. They even have, um, they're probably paying certain stores some money to put some of their products facebook does make a few products uh products on their store shelves so that you're able to buy them so uh there are some expenses and so 61 cents of that one dollar that they would receive goes to pay for expenses 40 cents goes to paying well this profit as a shareholder that's great news because that means that a lot of that money could be returned to me not saying it is but could be Okay. Now, this is unusual. Uh, companies don't necessarily are not usually in the 40% unless they have an intangible good that they're selling. Well, Facebook is selling ad space intangibly. There is no thing, nothing that they have to print. There's nothing that they have a cost of inventory. So we would expect a company like them to be pretty high. Uh, but if they were actually having to print newspapers and putting ads on there, we wouldn't see it this high. So remember, this is not the usual. But for a company like Facebook, we get it. This makes sense. They don't really have much cost. Their costs are people and a website, really, at the end of the day. I'm bringing it down to a very low level, but you get what I mean, okay? So not usual, but eh, not bad at all, okay? So that is the net profit margin. We're trying to figure out you know, how much of each dollar a company receives goes to profit. Now, that 39.6% means nothing until we actually compare it to its peers, like LinkedIn, um, Snapchat, uh, um, even Google. So we have to look at that from a peer standpoint, but we also wanna look at that from a past year. Has it, has it been growing or has it been stagnant? I mean, stagnant is better than not stagnant um, or is it declining so maybe last year it was 45 percent and this year's 39.6 percent what's causing the difference and then that from a manager standpoint that's where we sit back and go okay we're seeing it decline why is it declining oh well we're paying employees more or oh we had this issue that cost us five billion dollars to fix or they were just fined by the european union for privacy concern and it was x amount of dollars and so that's where some of that went so again this helps managers figure out, okay, what's our next step when it comes to our finances and how do we improve our finances for our stockholders? So that's kind of the guide here. Super important number, something that we can actually use and make decisions from. So that is our ratio analysis lesson and that is the net profit margin. Hope you like this uh, video and we'll see you in the next lesson. Hey guys, it is Patrick. Don't forget to press the like button and share this video with someone who could get a lot of use from watching this lesson, like maybe a classmate or maybe a friend or maybe just a parent just because you wanted to share this video because you're very excited about what you saw. Share it with someone. And if you wanna help us grow and help us make sure that we put the very best in accounting topics out on YouTube, make sure you press the subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. That way you're alerted every time we post videos to this channel. Now, I do this with every one of my classes at the end of class. What did you learn from this lesson? Put that in the comment section below and I'll respond to you on what you got out of this video. So hope you enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next lesson.